Welcome to the video. I'm Fletcher. This is the Fletcher Wolf Racing Shop. You may have seen our cool racing stuff videos. If you haven't, check those out on our Reels or Shorts page. Today, we're doing a spring test. We're using Landrum 250 pound per inch spring. This is a 12 inch spring. And what we're gonna test is whether it makes any difference where you put your spring rubber in the length of the spring, whether you put it in the middle or towards the end. So to do that, we can, again, using a Landrum 250 pound spring. We're using an RE one inch spring rubber. This has a durometer of 70. And we're going to test without the spring rubber, with the spring rubber in the middle, with the spring rubber at the end. We'll do a two inch load. We'll check the rate there and then we'll do a four inch load. So let's start without the spring rubber. We're gonna compress the spring two inches and take our total load that the spring produces at two inches of travel. Two inches, we're seeing 502 pounds. So that lines up with our 250 pound per inch spring rate. Using green for the total load. 500 and now it's showing 500, so we'll go with 502 though. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the rate here. So it'll really be a two to three inch rate because what we're gonna do is we're going to zero our load cell, compress the spring another inch, and then check to see what the rate is. Zero that guy. getting a rate of 251. So right in what we expect. I would call that within the margin of error on the machine. We will now compress the spring another inch and what we'll do is we'll take our, our load number from two to four and add it from to our load number from zero to two. We went slightly over 4.001, seeing a load of 504. We're gonna add that to our two inch load number of 502. That gives us a four inch load of 1,006. So if we divide that by four, what we're gonna get is 251 and change right on where we think it should be. I'm gonna go back down to zero here. Now we'll start our B test. I'm gonna let this get down to zero and we will start our B test. Our B test has the spring rubber in the center of the travel. Again, we're gonna do a two inch total load a spring rate check, and then a four inch total load. So, starting out with our two inch load. So, what we've got here is we've got the spring with the rubber in it compressed two inches, and we're seeing a rate of 527, using red for this test. We're gonna zero our scale here, our load cell, and we're gonna go another inch. That will give us our rate. We've gone to three inches here, and we have a rate of 280. So you can see the rubber is changing our spring rate here. We'll go another inch, and that will give us our total load from two to four. We will add that to our total load from zero to two to get a total load from zero to four. four inches, total load of 565. Oops, sorry, messed that up. Yeah, 1092, so it's 565 plus 527, 1062. So, you can see that our two to four number is more than our zero to two, 1092, I'm sorry, 1092. So we can see that our two to four number of 565 is more than our zero to two number of 527. So the rubber has more of an effect, the more travel it. 
that you have. That makes sense. So, 1006 to 1092, one spring rubber in the middle of the tra travel at four inches of travel has a 92 pound effect on your total load. So now we're gonna take it back down and we're gonna put the spring rubber down at the bottom of the truck, about bottom of the lane. Time for test C. Test C has the spring rubber at one end of the length. Let's take a look, quick look at our results. So our two inch load without a spring rubber was 502. Our rate in between two and three inches was 251, and our four inch total load was 1,006. With one spring rubber, we saw a two inch load of 527 pounds. So we're seeing about a 25, in, 25 pound difference between our two inch load without a spring rubber and our two inch load with a spring rubber. Our rate at that two to three, our one inch rate went from 251, which is what the spring manufacturer made, to 280. So we're seeing a 30 pound di difference there. And then our four inch load went from 1,006. Again, you take 1,006 divided by four, you see a spring rate of roughly 251 and change. Well within the margin of error of our machine. And it went to 10, 1092. So we're seeing about a 90 pound difference with the spring rubber. So now we're gonna repeat these tests with spring rubber in a different location. Starting with our two inch total load. getting a total load of 531 pounds. We use black for our C test. A very small difference between the B and C test. Let's check our rate. Do that, we're gonna zero our load cell, and we're gonna go another inch. I'm seeing a rate of 274. So actually, that kind of leans the other direction. Now we're gonna to go to four inches and get our four inch total load. To do that, we're gonna add our zero to two inch load with our two to four inch load, and that'll give us our zero to four load. Four inch, seeing 551. 551 plus 531 is 1081. Yes, I did that all in my head. That was a joke, by the way. Does it make a difference where you put your spring rubber? With our margin of error on a manual machine, no. Doesn't make a difference, which is kind of what we figured. So, is there a difference? Slight, probably, but I would call it immeasurable on a manual machine like this. And on the racetrack, no, you're not going to see a difference between the spring rubber in the middle and the spring rubber at the end. Thank you for watching today's video. If you like race car stuff, you like car stuff, you like cool stuff in general, give us a follow, give us a subscribe. We'd love to have you. We'll see you on the next one.